Hey everyone, let's take a look at Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun, a game that came out of the blue, released on December 6th, uh, created by Mimimi Productions and published by Dedalic Entertainment. It's a game in the vein of the Commandos and Desperados games, published around the year 2000s. Uh, they're real-time tactical games where you control this cast of diverse characters, both in personalities and abilities, through often increasingly difficult levels. They focus on stealth gameplay, and they're often characterized by their very much encouraged usage of quick save and quick load functions, which leads to trial and error gameplay most of the time due to the easy nature of save scumming, but this type of a game is just about the only one where I can excuse that manner of gameplay. As you might guess by the name, Blades of the Shogun is set in the Edo period of Japan <laughs> and between Commandos of World War II and Desperados of the Western setting. I think the only ones we really need now is a fantasy and a cyberpunk game on this vein and we'll have the whole set. Save for the aforementioned Commandos and Desperados, I don't really know many similar games to this type of genre and I was super delighted to see a modernized take on it. Whereas the older types often had these pre-rendered levels with collision boxes for actual movement, this one has fully three-dimensional levels, which you can actually rotate around. And it's an incredibly helpful feature. It also improves on the old formula of skill and item usage of the characters. While in the earlier games you'd use these convoluted, if sensible, hotkeys, like in the case of Commandos, K for knife and then H for hand when you want to track the body away, and these functions would be placed on a piece of HUD, like a backpack or some such, which looks cool, but was not the easiest thing to learn due to all of the characters having different hotkeys for abilities and items that weren't shared. And as you can see here, it's handled so much differently, and I was extremely surprised to see how well and smoothly it all plays out. At the bottom of the HUD you can see this kind of Dota-esque skill bar, and the keybinds for the characters are actually the same, A for melee attacks and so on. And then there's the control key for functions, such as dragging bodies and fiddling with environmental objects. And if you're not familiar with the aforementioned two older games, and you might be wondering if it's fair to compare this one to them, just look up some gameplay footage of them, you'll see the similarities very quickly. But instead of just blindly iterating its earlier counterparts, this one's improved a lot in the quality of life things like the hotkeys and such. You might have seen that friendly little pop-up at the top of the screen just a moment ago, and as I mentioned earlier on about the quicksaving nature of the genre, it's one of the features that's probably near impossible to shake off of it. So instead of blindly trying to fix it, every minute you go on without quicksaving, it gives you a reminder, and in a game like this, slip-ups, mismanagement, haste and poor planning are quite common, at least for me. But of course, if you've ever used quicksaves liberally, you're probably familiar with the mishap that is saving the game half a second away from an unexpected death which you're doomed to quickload over and over again. Well, in Shadow Tactics, hitting ESC to pause actually gives you a choice from the three latest quicksaves you've done in case you've really saved yourself into a corner. So, is it fun to play and is it gripping? Yeah, it really is. Besides the occasional moments where the game doesn't let you jump down from ledges unless you're in a perfect spot that the game insists you to use, there's a bit of an oversight also where two of the characters drag bodies in a position that is considered to be crouching, which grants you increased cover from enemy visibility, whereas two others can't do that no matter what. I can understand this in the case of the heavily armored samurai, but surely the ninja should be able to drag a downed fool or two. A minor complaint that I've seen pop up online as well is how the stages feature these optional challenges, and which are a great addition, don't get me wrong, but the issue is that they're only visible once you've completed the stage. So instead of being plausible to do on the first time playing, you're likely going to unlock the easiest one of them and then discover a ludicrously difficult challenge like don't use this character or don't, don't use crouch on that character. It's crazy, but it's certainly doable. 
and then there's the times where your attack commands get seemingly lost halfway through and you'll find your character trying to crouch through an enemy. And while these are problems and I don't want to make excuses for them, it's easy to shrug them off when your last quick save was 5 seconds away from that initial fuck up that'll probably work this time. And then there's the levels, and they are not constructed in a linear manner, which is extremely important in my eyes for a game like this. Instead, it often gives you an option or two on how to approach the objectives. For example, without any spoilers, there's a mission where you need to reach a tent in the middle of an enemy camp. And you have an option to sneak into a cart and ride past many of the enemy patrols into a corner that's halfway through the map but heavily fortified. Or you can choose the subterfuge and try to steal a disguise and then drop a few roofies in the enemy's sake. How interesting is it to follow then? Well, I personally found the story and the characters to be written in a predictable manner and most of the plot points you can see coming a mile away. But as I've always thought in fiction, what happens isn't as important as how it happens. And this one delivers a story and a narrative which was easy and joyful to follow through all the way to the end. Something worth commending is also the soundtrack composed by, <laughs> if you'll pardon my frankly insulting mispronunciation, uh, one Filippo Beck Pecos whose soundtrack doesn't sound out of place in the slightest, but instead they add a lot of feel to the shinobi sneak arounds, and it's one of the few games where I've actually gone and bought the OST separately. That's about it really, so overall, what do I think and what should you think? Well, it's a brilliant game, and had I played it a week or two earlier, I would have certainly mentioned it in my Games of 2016 video. It's really high up there and it proved to me how this genre can adapt, improve and still be worthy of playing even so many years after its clear inspirations came out. It takes what they did well and implements what they should have, but instead of feeling like a knockoff and a blind reiteration, it's a game that stands on its own and I'm really freaking pleased to have played it and to use the cop-out compliment, I only wish there was more of it. As for you, my dear little friend, if you're a fan of Commandos and or Desperados, there's no reason you wouldn't like this one, unless you really abhor the setting. But if you haven't played these types of games, there's no better time to try it out. And if you do, do it through this one. Closing thoughts, it's, it's incredible and I'm a big fan. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.